What's going on guys? Great morning, great morning. It's the day after Easter. It's the day after Easter and I'm coming to you with another uh, morning devotion on the road this morning uh, while just out getting stuff done on my way to work, that type of stuff. Now, my question is what happens the day after Easter? What happens the day after Easter? You might be like, well, Stefan, what are you talking about? What do you mean the day after Easter? I mean, what we call as Christians Resurrection Sunday, generally churches see one of their largest attendances up until this point in the year on that day, right? Churches see their largest attendances, people that might be missing in a while come back, people that uh, don't usually come show up, you might get new faces, that type of stuff, especially if your church has a special, some special events, that type of things, maybe some type of uh, dramatization of the word, maybe it's a special service, whatever is happening, right? You have a high attendance. Now, what happens the day after? Generally, this week leading up to Easter, leading up to Resurrection Sunday, from Palm Sunday to Resurrection Sunday, is a power-packed week for the church. And then the day after, people just fall off. People go back into the same old, same old. People go back into their old habits and it shouldn't be that way. So I want to encourage you today to implement new disciplines, whether you're a seasoned believer and you know, it's just another day for you with your regular devotions, with your regular prayer, that type of stuff. Even if you're a seasoned believer or if you're a new convert or someone who's rededicated their life to the Lord, you want to start implementing some things. You see, you might have just given your heart to God and the enemy doesn't like that. He doesn't like that you've given your heart to God. So you need to now start praying. You need to start reading your Bible, right? Generally, it's the new Christians that face the trials and tribulations of many kinds. I'm not saying seasoned Christians can't face that, but the devil, I believe, would like to attack the weakest target. Weakest target, fresh convert, new excitement, new life within you. The ones who've been saved for, 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 for 20, 30, 40 years, who've been strong in the faith, and no matter what happens, they serve God. It's not probably nothing much a devil can do to drag them away from the Lord. So he would be wise to, to, to leave them alone. And even if he tries to engage in them, they should be spiritually strong enough to fight him off. But if you're a new Christian, you just rededicated your life to God, you want to get your life in order, you need to start implementing certain spiritual disciplines. I challenge you. Have you thought about reading the entire Bible? Read the entire Bible, whether you're seasoned or you're new. Reading the Bible once per year should be a discipline of every believer. At least once per year. This is your faith. This is what you believe. The other religions study their books, but sometimes as Christians, because we're saved by grace, right? We, we get a little bit lackadaisical. We get a little bit comfortable. So I want to encourage you today, don't let the enemy cause havoc in your life and cause you to run away from reading the word. I'll tell you this, generally most Christians tell me that when they first start reading the Bible or start back reading after a long period of time, they feel sleepy. They feel tired. They happen to fall asleep. I believe it's, a, it's if every, if it's happened to so many people, it has to be an attack of the enemy. He doesn't want you to read your word, he wants you to sleep. It's either that or it could just be your fleshly man fighting against your spiritual man. The Bible says the, the spirit is at war with the flesh, right? The spirit is at war with the flesh. But once you start feeding your spirit man more, your spirit being more, you will be able to overcome. You will be able to overcome. So what I'm saying to you today is this. I challenge you, start that Bible reading plan. If you've only been someone getting the daily bread every day, it's not enough. It's not enough. The daily bread is an awesome tool, a powerful tool, a great tool. But if I'm not mistaken, even in the daily bread, it has a Bible in a year plan. Are you actually reading it out? I'm not talking about what you did in December. I'm talking about from January 1st to December 31st this year. Read the entire word. You can listen to it if you've never gotten through it before but you can also read it. It's important to read as well. Read, listen, get it into you. I challenge you. 
When you do that, you're feeding yourself spiritually. You're empowering yourself spiritually. Now what happens after you read? Pray. Pray. I don't know what your church did, but my church, we, we did something on prayer yesterday for Resurrection Sunday because so many people need to have a better relationship with God. Learn how to pray. Start with the Our Father prayer. Just look it up. Type it in on Google. You'll see the verse in Matthew come up. And what's going to happen is you're going to be equipped now to start praying. Pray the Our Father prayer. Just repeat it just as Jesus taught it in the beginning. Right? And then you can make it more your own as you go along. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. You exalt him a little bit. You worship him. Then you start talking to him. Lord, whatever your will is for my life, let it be done. If you can't take me there, I don't want to go there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Pray for the things you want to happen in your life. Remember, prayer is communication. It's talking with God. It's calling upon the name of the Lord. It can be done so simply. You don't have to do a million things to do it if you're just starting off. Just, could, just talk to him. He wants that relationship with you. Jesus wants to have a relationship with you. Right now, he's seated at the right hand of, of his Father in heaven, praying for you. So the Bible teaches us, praying for you. Right? So start by just simple communication. Talking to God. Start somewhere. Read your Bible. Pray. Worship. Find some good worship songs. When I mean good worship songs, not worship songs that like make you feel defeated and that you're the lowest in the world, that type of thing. A worship song that uplifts you, that, that worships the Lord. Sing along to it. Close your eyes and, and think about the words that the song is, 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 is uh, speaking of. Lift your hands. The Bible says we should lift up holy hands. Just as you would lift your hands if, if you were being arrested, you're, you're giving your life in surrender to God, so you should lift your hands. Worship Him. Praise Him. If it's a fast song, clap your hands, stomp your feet, dance a little bit. He inhabits the spirit of praise, inhabits the praises of His people. Right, guys? So I'm just giving you very practical steps today that I want you to take the day after Easter. If you're missing a single component of this, I encourage you, I highly encourage you, start somewhere. Get it done. You can do it. I know you can do it. God wants you to do it. And through His Holy Spirit, He will empower you to do it. Especially if you've given your life to Him or rededicated your life to Him. So the day after Easter, today it happens to fall on April Fool's Day. Don't let nobody make a fool out of you. You can have your fun today, whatever it is. However, every single day, don't let a day go by without you talking to your God talking to your Lord, spending some time with Him. So guys, remember, stay close to God. Develop that relationship with Him. The Bible teaches us that Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the door and knock. He's waiting for someone to open up to Him so that He can come in make all things new so that he can come in and give you that salvation so that he can come in and save you from eternal damnation and you can continue to be saved once you implement these spiritual habits every single day small actions every day now i know i said that the daily bread is not enough i want to tell you this if you're not on the daily bread start with the daily bread right i don't want to make it seem like i'm knocking any devotion or any tool if you um if you haven't, you know, started something, start somewhere. Start somewhere. All right. And we can build on that foundation. Build on, start somewhere and build on that foundation. As a matter of fact, if you're a new believer, jump on the daily bread. But read your Bible still, still pray, still worship, still have that fellowship with God. Let's pray, then we'll get on to tomorrow's devotion. Father, I come to you today in no other name but that mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you, dear God, that this day after this, this resurrection Sunday that we celebrated, that you are risen from the grave, Lord God, that, Lord, we will not treat it like any other day. 
that this day we will make a difference. We will decide to serve you more and more. We will decide to, to have that relationship with you and not just let it be another year, not just let it be another religious action, another service, Lord God, that we've attended and we leave unchanged. Lord, let the miracles that have happened yesterday, let the decisions for people that have served you yesterday, Lord God, let it take, let, let, let it bear fruit, Lord Jesus. Let, let something happen that hasn't happened for someone before. Let them draw closer to you. Holy Spirit, go where they are. Fill them up until they overflow. Lord, we know thou anointest our head with oil and our cups runneth over. Let us run over for you on this day of Easter. The day after Easter, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, thanks so much for joining me again. Share this devotion with someone. If someone is a new believer, they need to get the right spiritual habits into their lives. Please share this with them. Like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already. And if you would like to sow a seed to my local church or even to this YouTube channel, the information is down below. God bless you. Take care.